let's call the to order the Carroll County Commissioners Weekly Meeting of um, March 20th, 2019. Will you join me in the pledge, please? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, I'll wait for uh, minutes approval. Motion. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes of March 13th. Yes. Okay, are there any corrections or admissions? Um, I had a correction here. Um, Page. I think it's on the first page. Yes, the credit card policy discussion. Uh, it says the commissioners discussed the use of credit cards and policy with some department heads. All department heads weren't here, <coughs> just some. And um, it says that we'll discuss the policy again next week. I didn't realize it was going to be this week. I didn't either. So um, can we just change that? We'll discuss the policy again, period, without the next week. Do you object to that? Either again? No, that's fine, because I didn't okay. saw that, but I didn't bring this stuff. All right. Anything else? Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, sure. Yes. Why do you think it's important to put in with some department as they were all here except for the county attorney? I do not believe the registry of deeds was here. And the sheriff was, was not here. They should have a credit card in their own, and he has his own account. So. But he would still be subject to our policy. Okay, if she wasn't here and she was, the other one wasn't here, then someone's fine. Uh, are there any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Today is the 27th? No, Delegation is going to approve the budget this afternoon. Oh, it's this afternoon. I believe it's this afternoon. Yeah, at uh, around 4:30. Okay. And conquer. Okay. Any others? Madam Chairman. Yes, sir. This is sort of out of order, but since the question came up, um, you received a, a copy of a message from Edie Demaris last night with. Um, Melissa questioning the Hales location budget. Are they going to go forward with it? Um, Joe and I have been talking about it. I, I met, uh, I, I was on the phone with DRA supervisor Bruce Kinnear yesterday for about an hour. Um, he met with his uh, assistant commissioner. Uh, it's still 
they still don't have a, a ruling. Um, they've kicked out the legal, but he doesn't think that it requires one. Um, it, it, it's in towns, cities, unincorporated places. But each specific um, rule, I guess, uh, specifies either town, city, and for all of these, um, it doesn't mention unincorporated places except in uh, one about the budgeting. Other than that, um, so he doesn't feel it, it requires one. He did recommend that next year when we bring forth Hale's location budget, it should be at the same time as our budget. That way, you know, because we have to have a public hearing on ours. So that way, um, that's how COAS does all of theirs, all at the same time. So maybe Kathy could get it ready by, you know, the end of November. If I may? Yes, Steve. <clears throat> so I spoke with Kathy about this issue yesterday again, and she said that previously they've never done that. Uh, because it is an unincorporated town, they do not have to do that. Um, and that was her interpretation, and she's been there for quite a while. Um, Ken checking with legal, I think, is a great idea, obviously, to confirm it. Um, it was brought to my attention by uh, Melissa, uh, and then I guess Edie had some questions about it. But um, I agree with what Ken's saying going forward. When the county does their budget, we should have that at the same time. And you kind of covered all the bases. Right. But I'm sort of of the opinion, I'm no attorney, but I'm sort of of the opinion that we do not need to do that. However, I haven't relayed that to uh, other than Ken this morning. So we'll take it to them today? You, yeah. Um, Joe had it updated, so I think we should vote on this one. I, I think last today. week they did vote on it, but... Yes. It was about the assessment, right? The, uh, the assessment total. Yeah, and the total budget you voted on was... Um, As I make sure it's the same amount. Yeah, two hundred and fifty thousand two hundred and forty-six dollars. Yeah, that's it. So I guess it's all set. Okay. Other than the delegation. Yep. So I will bring it with us this afternoon. Okay. Did you see that? Yep. Yeah. I was just supposed to read it, right? Um. Well, it was just here on the table. Um. Okay. Thank you, Clara. Is there any public input? The check manifest approval for the week ending March 15th was $822,727.78. Um, that included the uh, monthly Bureau of Elderly and Adult Services check. That's why it's a lot. It, um, it's, I mean, it, it's about yeah. half of that. Yes. So. Um, so we're going to start with House Bill 381, a discussion. Yes, David. Uh, that's here with my request, Madam Chairman. Madam Chairman, last week after the House passed 381, um, I went and watched the uh, session uh, from, from the House. And in Cordelli, when he got up to speak, in opposition to this bill, said that um, he had talked to two commissioners and they were opposed uh, to um, <coughs> repeal. So I started to think when I got home, there's only four of us that have been involved, ex-commissioner Hansel, my, you, Terry, and myself. Representative uh, Commissioner Hansel has been very outspoken over the last two years about the transfer process. I wasn't quite as outspoken, but I opposed it, so it came down to the two of you. Um, and I had to eliminate Terry because, or Commissioner McCarthy, because the first time she did it, I can almost quote her verbatim, she said, I've been on a lot of budget committees, and this is about the dumbest thing I've ever seen. Who could have possibly put this in? 
or what would they, what, why would they think it was a good law? Um, so she either has done a 180 and now supports repeal. And you wrote back to Mr. Cordelli here, if you'd like a copy of what you wrote. I, I have copies of it. Well, maybe yeah. Terry doesn't. Yep, I have a copy. You got a copy, okay. You sent it to me. Okay. You, you, you start off by saying that you don't support um, repeal because you think the delegation should have oversight in uh, managing the budget. I think that's contrary to the law. May I see what you're reading? That's not what I said. Well, that's what you put in here, right there. Okay, well, if you want to quote me, fine. Quote me, but don't paraphrase, please. Okay. If, would you let me read the whole thing? I don't care. To whom it may concern, if I am per personally, I am in favor of financial oversight of the wine item transfer by the county commissioners and the county delegation. If this bill removes all delegation oversight, then I'm personally um, against it. If it returns the delegation oversight to state law and uh, an amount of five thousand dollars then I personally am okay with it. I don't know where I misquoted you, but that sounds to me like what I said. Um, my concern is uh, that the, the previous Board of Commissioners were um, in favor of repeal. This Board apparently isn't, and we never had a uh, We've never had a vote, and um, it, 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 it bothers me that, that, that you write here, if it returns delegation oversight to the state law, if it returns, it would indicate that you didn't even know in the bill that you, you write Cordelli, and the, representing the board, <coughs> In representing myself personally, I said personally, said personally twice. Personally, how did you sign it? Well, I don't know. I have a title, I guess. I probably put it down. Well, you don't. Well, I've been around this league a long time, and the fact that you put county board of commissioners, chairman, carries a lot of weight with twenty people on a delegate uh, on a committee that that doesn't that doesn't know the background of things. And why, if, if, if it's only personally, why didn't you just sign it? I don't have a problem with Amanda Bivad, chairman, or Amanda Bivad. Uh, Commissioner Hunsell and I, and the one few that I've written, and uh, all of that he's written, said this is my opinion and my opinion alone. Yes, you said I'm personally in favor of financial oversight. But I think that... Um, you know, we've had this discussion before. It should be a board action, and we haven't taken any any um, any vote on this at all. And I think we should take a vote on it, and um, so that we all know where whoever is here stands. Thank you. Um, yes, I I have to just agree with Mr. Davison. I don't believe I ever said that. It's right on the tape. Well, I'd like to see it. If you can show it to me, I've never said anything about it being stupid, and I've always been in favor of repeal. I don't think not repeal. Maybe you did. I've never been in favor of repeal. Maybe you didn't say stupid, but there was yeah. dumb or something. I said I can almost call it, but I'll find it for you because you certainly did say it. If you can prove it to me, because I'm sure I didn't. Any more discussion on House Bill 381? Um, yes. And David, I, you asked me when I had talked to Glenn. He called me the night before the the um, vote, and I told him he could use my name. And you what? I told him that I was against. Different feeling. Yes, and that he could use my name personally. No. 
we have a vote, Madam Chairman? For what? This board, this board never voted on our position on 381. Are you making a motion for us to vote on? If you'd like me to, do yes. Well, we can't have a vote without a motion. I'll make a motion that we approve approve uh, the uh, um, uh, approve three uh, House Bill three eighty one, which repeals uh, the Carroll County portion of line transfer line item transfer. Respected? People afraid to go on record? Motion fails, lack of a second. I'm not afraid. I, you said to approve the repeal, and I don't approve it, so I'm not going to vote to. So you vote for it, so you second it and vote it down, and then change the motion to approve it. Uh, to uh, make it ITL, excuse me. to Porter Office Machine for a, for a printer for Jeff in her office. <coughs> it's the, um, we got the, the lease agreement and the maintenance agreement. It's uh, $28 a month to lease for four years, I think, five years. I'm sorry? 48 months. Yep, yeah, uh, for 48 months. Mm -hmm. So we just need a, someone to sign. I guess that. Oh, there's a place for two people to sign. Which printer is that for? Yeah. Well, the one that you authorized for Jeff in, in her office. Oh. And then we have the per copy charge of point zero one nine. So copy. she's only going to have black and white. Yes. Yeah. It's only black. And yes. Um, do we need a second motion on that, or was no, the approval just, last time? Right, it was the approval. You just got to sign it. Um, why do you suppose there's two signatures? Oh, uh, I, I don't know. Um, if they have, like, if they're going to a, a law firm, sometimes it's a it's a partnership. Um, okay, I um, I need a motion to be able to sign it. I think. Yes, it was last week. Um, I got a call from DOT Monday 
saying that they needed a, um, a revision. Uh, they had left out the uh, one item, the board insulation, two inches thick to go over the pipe. It was left out of the calculations. So it's up $200. So there's a change in the, in the cost. And what if we tell them we don't want them to list? Then we'll have problems, it'll freeze. <laughs> so, um, so they came up, um, they initialed it. Um, so I need you to initial it, Amanda, because you signed it last time. <clears throat> so it went from... Me as an initial. Yep. Yeah, it went from two... 20,593.38 to 20,761.28. Okay. 20, how much? 20? 20,761.28. Great, thank you. Yeah. Encumbrances. Yeah, and going over, and getting, Kathy getting ready for the audit for tomorrow. They're coming back tomorrow and Friday. Uh, the auditors are coming. Uh, we found that we had two uh, two encumbrances left over from 2017, uh, one for $4,210.23 uh, for uh, uh, flooring in the jail, and $9,212 for, um, for electrical upgrades to, the, uh, to their security. It wasn't used, and the auditors, normally they, they were saying it was good for three years, but now they want us to encumber it every year. Um, so I'm asking if, if you want to encumber this money to utilize it on those two items. They hadn't done any work at all? Um, no work at all? No, they, they did some work um, with the flooring. As you know, they, they redid the whole front entranceway <laughs> and, and, this, and the supervisor's office. And um, there's still more flooring to be done. It was encumbered, it wasn't used. So we, we can use it for flooring only, or you don't re-encumber it and it goes back to the, to the general fund. David? How long is an encumbrance on good flooring? We had been doing it uh, you know, for three years, and then after the third year it lapsed into, into the fund balance. When I met with them this past, the last time they were here, we had talked about encumbrances, um, and she said they'd like to see it every year. So that you know it, that you keep track of it because you can lose track of it because it goes from you have to look on each financial sheet of that year. Um, so Kathy had to go back and look on seventeen because they're asking for you know seventeen and eighteen encumbrances lists and she's putting them together and found that we still haven't utilized this thirteen grand. So, so it, it is legal to encumber yes. something that's three yes. years old. Yes, as long as it's for that item. Okay. Was there also an item on Bob's list that wasn't his encumbered list that wasn't used? Mm -mm. Okay. No, the, um, it was these two <coughs> items plus a couple small items that uh, for, went for 143. I said, no, I'm not going to encumber that for something else. And the $10,000 that we encumbered for the for the feasibility study over at the assisted living. That is still encumbered, but I, I'm letting that roll back in um, because I don't think we encumbered it properly in the first place. Okay, so this is, which one was the flooring? Uh, number 11. And the electrical isn't being addressed by Siemens? Not, no, not this. It's for the, uh, so some more work on the fire alarm panel. On what panel? The fire alarm panel. And that was originally re encumbered in 19, uh, 2017. Both of them? Yes. And again, if you don't 
don't stay on top of it, it just everyone just forgets about it. I have that problem if you do stay on top of it. <coughs> So we need, you want to vote for keeping those two items encumbered? Is that what we're voting yes. on? Yes. And let the other, uh, the $10,000 lapse in the, in the fund balance. Oh, that's part of this? No. Well, yeah, it was, but I, but, but I didn't put it on here. I'm, I'm not recommending to bring it forward to you. Because we have 25000 in here this year. Is 11 and 13. No, I'm sorry. Yeah. We, I don't know what happened at 12. That, that was the assistant. Mm -hmm. Okay. And to let the $10,000 feasibility study lapse into the fund balance. Is there any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? everybody to death. Um, I don't worry about it, but you get a dog in here that isn't trained and takes a chunk out of a kid's face, or I can tell you, Primax isn't going to be happy about covering it. But once they put it in writing that they'll cover it, I don't see why we, we 
we shouldn't have a policy that the dog can't be in here with the kids. What is the nursing home's policy on dogs? Um, how we just wrote one. It's seven page long. I haven't seen it yet because they're starting to get a lot of a lot of animals over there visiting. Um, the dogs on a leash. Um, always in control. The owner always has to be in control. I, I don't know what the policy is. They come in, they gotta go. Hmm? If they come in, they gotta go. No, um, he's put like they, you gotta take a they picture. Stay there with the with the resident. Overnight? No. Oh, no, they no, no. Go. It, it, It's just a visit, yeah. Visitation. Yeah. Um, you know, it, we, we, we did have a service dog over there, um, a, uh, a respiratory uh, uh, therapist was training her dog to be a, you know, a service therapy dog. Um, so that dog was in there. Um, but um, so so there's a new policy. I, like I said, I haven't seen it yet. Um, it's seven pages long. I told her it's a little too long. Probably should cut it back. Um, so again, I'm, I don't mind dogs. I you know I have three of my own. One I spent a certain amount of time training it uh, to be a, a therapy dog. It is um, it is certified, but. Um, you know, having a pet is different than a, than, than a, than a service dog. So, um, I, I would just like to see that we have at least their, their vaccinations on file for, for rabies and other things. Um, and that every year, you know, when they, or every three years when, they're, when they need a booster, that, that that's also brought in. Other than that, when the um, traveling barnyard came, did they have vaccinations for all their animals? I, that's with Susan. I had no idea. I'm sure they do. I'm sure they have some sort of a liability insurance too um, when they're traveling like that. Um, you, you must know Ruth. I do. I, I was just trying to remember. Because I used to do that years and years and years ago. Oh, really? At the, not at nursing homes. We used to go to um, shopping malls at Christmas for the kids and stuff. Hmm. But um, that was before, you know. Before the floorboard came out? You can please be nice. Um, but also, my son on several, several occasions have taken baby pigs and goats and things to nursing homes to visit, so. You have to have Yeah, I don't think it's unreasonable to ask for, um, you know, copies of vaccination and, and, and veterinary reports. I think we should have that for our insurance. I don't think that's an unreasonable request. I well, and I'm just thinking that, that it should be probably not just dogs, but all creatures. Any animals that come in, yeah. Because the nursing home may have more. And, and there has been one or two occasions where somebody had a baby piglet in this building. So. Who would that be? I, I wouldn't know. Madam Chairman? Yes. I, I really uh, think that we ought to have a more definitive um, explanation of what Primex is going to do in the way of coverage or if there's, a, if there's an injury. They, okay. they will cover us, but they will cover. You know, I'm sure they will. Um, but again, we have to have a policy in place okay. for that. Um, and again, what you know, Commissioner McCarthy said is not unreasonable to have on file information that we would need to file an incident report with Primex. Yeah. Do we have to get uh, Primex's okay on our policy? I don't believe so. Uh, as long as we have one. Um, I can shoot it off to them anyway, it's just a verification. And I, I think it probably should be county-wide. Yeah. So that whatever the nursing home is doing, we're doing, and the jail's doing. Um, well, they don't bring animals into the jail. Well, they're using pigs now, too. Here? No, no. Oh. 
and make sure the dog is physically healthy and well it's a it's a law now that in order to get them registered they have to have uh, rabies yeah. and, uh, well a rabies vaccination right every, right <laughs> they can't have rabies they got to have vaccination so. and i think any responsible pet owner has to have that done so. and they have the tags and they have the certificate that they have to take to get it registered um, Ken, are we, um, we're not jeopardizing um, the dog in the jail in the meantime, are we? Hmm? We're not jeopardizing our, having our sniffing dog in the, in the jail in the meantime. I don't understand what, what the question is. The dog is coming in here as an independent contract. Right. right. So I don't <coughs> think we have to worry that we don't have a policy on the dog because it's the jail and it's an independent contractor. Right. And, and he, he says has his own insurance. Right, he has the own insurance. So we don't have to worry about that. We're and, not and, going to spoil no, that. Right. And I know he goes down to this vet down here because they give him a, uh, yeah. uh, just because it is a working dog. Yeah. And the sheriff's dog. Mm -hmm. they, yep. They're all, um, they all have their stuff on fire. All right, so then. And I will check with um, Ruth Scruton and see what kind of um, things that she did. Because she went to all the, a lot of different nursing homes and things. So I think she went, went to schools too. Like, uh, you know, so like daycare centers and stuff like that. I take my little piglets to school and they don't ask for anything. All right. The Zuma versus the brazing. Um, I, I just texted Bob. He should be coming in. <clears throat> it's funny because I always call it brazing soldering. Well, Bob's a plumber, so he calls it brazing. I, it's, I think it's soldering, too. Um, um, the Hales location budget, we already discussed yeah. that. Yeah. Is there anything else you want to share about Hales location, Mr. Treasurer? At the moment, no. We're just trying to get this budget approved so that we can uh, pay off a bill here. Well, continuing with the animal discussion, um, the jail dog. Yeah, uh, he's 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 uh, he's in the process of doing transports, so he can't come over until eleven o'clock. So we'll go into non-public and then come back out. And, okay. Yeah. All right. Okay, Bob, you're on. Bob, what's the difference between soldering and brazing? Soldering is uh, low temperature, uh, used typically for water applications. Uh, brazing is a, is, a, is a hotter method. We use using brazing rod, it, it, it stand, withstands higher temperatures and higher pressures. So it's almost welded. Typically, oh, it's, it's, it's one step away from welding, yes. So you use the yellow can instead of the blue one. <clears throat> Don't ask me, nap gas, is nap gas? <laughs> Uh, no, grazing, you actually use an oxy oxygen and methylene <coughs> because you need to bring those temperatures up. So, um, that question. so, this kind of segue into the discussion of why 
I wanted to come and talk about air conditioning pipe. Um, which is copper. Correct? Which is copper, yeah. Um, I found out during, the, uh, during some of the construction meetings that they were using a product here in the air conditioning system called ZoomLock, which is a fairly new product to the market. And um, through my research and experience over the years, I've, I've, I'm, I'm uncomfortable with a new product. I don't want to be the guinea pig. And, um, and I'm uncomfortable <coughs> making a recommendation for a product for the county where we could be a guinea pig. Um, so th this product, ZoomLock, instead of brazing the copper pipes and fittings together, it's, it's, a, it's a process where they insert the pipe into the fitting and they clamp it down and the seal is made with an O-ring. That O-ring is, uh, is, is a potential weak point in my mind. There's two O-rings. <clears throat> What's that? There are two O-rings, isn't there? One on each piece of pipe? Yeah. One on each end, yes. Every, every, every connection there is an O-ring. Um, but this project was bid with zoom lock, not brazing. Brazing, well, I think, is a more permanent installation, where zoom lock is a faster installation and it doesn't have a fire hazard, you don't have open flames in the building. Uh, it has its advantages, but I'm uncomfortable recommending a product that I, I'm, I don't know the longevity. I don't know how long it's going to last. <clears throat> They've tested it. Um, I'm sure that this product will last many years. Uh, the, the installers here are very professional. I've seen their work. They're doing a great job. They'll be able to install a leak-free installation. Uh, they will test it accordingly to the, to the proper pressures, which is upwards of 600 PSI. They test this to. It's, it's pretty high. What normally runs in that? Refrigerant. I know, but what's the normal pressure? Well, no, operating pressures, it could be anywhere up to 600 PSI. Oh, it does go that yeah, high. I yeah. didn't realize it's that. Usually, it, it usually runs around 3, 4. It depends on the temperature, but it usually runs around 3, 400 PSI. Um, the manufacturer itself, um, they answer some technical questions. And um, one of the questions that's most frequently uh, asked is, what is the expected life of the O-ring in the system? And this is from the manufacturer themselves. And they say the expected life of the O-ring that stays within the product specifications for temperature and pressure should be 30 years. It's a lifetime guarantee for me. Well, yeah. yeah, but they use the word should, not will. Right. The manufacturer themselves are saying not should. You the They're not giving me the definitive yeah. answer that I'm looking for. So. What kind of a guarantee do we have from from Siemens on the product, 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 uh, product uh, guarantee is one year. The manufacturer will stand behind it for one year. However, it's not in the budget. Uh, to, to go to brazing would be a change order of about forty thousand dollars for the for the entire project. Um, we don't have the funding for it, at least at this point. There, there could be potential savings throughout the project that, uh, that would cover this expense, but I can't sit here and tell you that that's going to be the case. Um, so without funding, um, I can't ask you to sign a change order. But I also want to formally say that I'm uncomfortable with this product. Um, because I can't, I, I can't say that it's going to be leak free. These O rings aren't going to fail in 15, 20 years. David, Bob, if I remember correctly, they told us that the um, that the zoom lock would be used in areas where <coughs> they're easily accessible and. Uh, would be minimal damage if the pipe broke. Is that correct? The majority of the piping will be from the boiler room, from outside, yeah. through the boiler room, into the hallways on both the first and second floor. So, 
by going to um, Ziploc and Zoomloc and, uh, and saving $40,000 or whatever it is, and can we have a uh, obtain a rough estimate of what it would cost if they one of those blew out and they began to leak? I mean, is it going to cost us $40,000 for more refrigerant or uh, what are the, the... When you, the type of refrigerant that's being used is the, is the new ozone friendly refrigerant. So it's not liquid? No, it's, well, it can be in the liquid. It's liquid under gas, depends on uh, right. what pressure it's under. Um, but if you have a leak with this, this refrigerant is what they call a stepped refrigerant. A what? Stepped refrigerant. It, it, it has five different levels of uh, molecular specific gravity, so to speak. So if you have a leak that leaks at one temperature, you could only leak part of the refrigerant out, changing the balance of refrigerant. Or at another temperature, you leak another type of this part of this refrigerant out. So change, if you have a leak, it changes the balance, it changes the chemical structure. So if you have a leak, you essentially have to dump the whole charge, fix the leak, and recharge with brand new refrigerant. That's what you're facing. It's not a matter of um, collecting the charge, putting it back in, and then adding what you lost. You have to dump the old because it's no good anymore, and you have to recharge with new refrigerant. Is it charge uh, or whatever goes into the line? Is it very <coughs> expensive? <coughs> yeah. And a, a system like ours um, could could take 60, 80, 100 pounds of refrigerant. And, um, and when, you, when you're talking... Um, you know, five to six dollars a pound, it adds up. Well, it still doesn't come anywhere near the cost of the savings on on, on going to uh, Zoom Lock. Of no. course, you have to labor to, to fix it and everything else. But well, once you have one, you usually have more. Once once you start going down that road of, of, of failures, once they start, um, you have a higher only, potential only of having more. Is time. That's right. So, so you said. So, do we? Do you think about addressing this now and going with a proven braised pipe system that, that we know will last, or the potential? I'm not saying it's going to happen. The potential of starting to fix leaks, however many years down the road that the leaks start to happen. Bob, a question. Are we running any of this above the ceiling? Yes. So there is a there is more than just up into the first hall, mm -hmm. up into the hall. We're, we're, where are we running it in the ceilings? The zoom lock itself is going to be for the larger diameter piping, which is going to go to the um, distribution boxes, which are in the hallways. And then they're going to be smaller piping, which are going to go to the units that are in the offices. And those won't be zoom lock. Those will be either flared or they'll, they'll, they'll be flared connections, which are mechanical twist connections. Um, so my question is, if it's leaking, there won't be a lot of interior damage or anything, because it won't be over the rooms in the ceiling. It, it'll be in the hallway or in the Yeah, I mean, it, it's, it'll, it'll leak out as a gas, and it'll just resorb into the, into the air. Um, the only thing... You could lose a ceiling tile or two because of some of the oil that may drip, but that's about it. Refrigerant. So it will be up in the ceiling? Yes. The zoom lock? Yes. That was my question, if the zoom lock was going to be put oh. above the ceilings, yes. or if just the flare units were going to be? They're all going to be above the ceilings. Well, I thought you said the zoom lock is in, in the boiler room and into the hallway. Yeah, above the ceiling. Into the hallway, though, not into the room, right? She asked if it was going to be above the ceiling, so it's above the. What you said in the room. In the, in the halls. In the halls. But not in the seat. Not in the individual rooms. In the so. individual rooms, it's going to be a different connection. Okay. The zoom lock is going to be basically <coughs> in the hallways. Out. So when they do, if they would do raising <coughs> instead of zoom lock, it would just be over the hallways mm -hmm. and in the boiler room. To the best of my knowledge. And that they're talking is $40,000? Yeah, because the, um, the, you have to change the product. 
um, and it's more, it's, it's labor, it's essentially labor. Well, I understand it takes twice as long to do it, but... Or, or more. You have to hire another body because they have to have somebody do fire watch uh, while, they're, while they're actually brazing. And brazing takes more time than zoom lock. That's, that's all the reason they're bringing the product to the market. Two different gases and yeah. Yeah. hotter flame. Yeah, off of fire. <coughs> yeah, yeah. When you're brazing, you have to run nitrogen through the lines to prevent oxidization. Um, so there, there are a lot more expenses with brazing. That's why, that's why it costs more. That's why they came out with a product that was I just better, faster, cheaper. I use shock bite all the time. Yeah. Much better. I'm just not sure what's better. Well, it is when you see my soldering. <laughs> yes. So when we were going through the demonstration, it, it was. Um, it was pretty interesting how it works. And I talked to Brian yesterday, and he said it's, it's now an industry standard to use the zoom lines. On our water pipes in the, in the boiler room, our shutoff valves are something similar. They, are, they were put on with a crimping mechanism, pretty much the same thing. Pressure's a little different, but it's a six inch line, right? Three inch. It's a three inch line. Um, and, it, and it's got the dimple on the top, and that's holding out. But again, it's a different, it's a small, it's a lower pressure. Mm -hmm. But still, it's up around, what, 80? No, 30, about 35. About 35. 35 PSI water. Um, uh, that, that's because it's gravity fed. If it was a, right. another type of system, it would be higher. Right. Um, the delegation only gave us so much, so we'd have to go back to them and ask for $40,000 more. Um, I don't know if it'd have to be notice that way or, or not a specific way I was hoping to have come up with uh, some cost savings in the project before today and they didn't materialize so like I said at the beginning of this discussion I can't I can't come here and ask you for the money because we did budget for it um, but I did want you to be aware that I have a concern and I wanted to I wanted to go on record that uh, I'm on I'm, I'm uncomfortable re recommending the product Who knows? Just because I came and sat here and talked about it today, it'll probably be fine, and 50 years down the road, we won't we'll long forgotten about this discussion. Well, my question is, how old is the HVAC system that's in here now? Um, well, the, essentially, it's as old as the building. It's been, it's been upgraded about 20 years ago. And how old is the building? 1978. 40 years old. So the duct work, essentially, is all that's left of the old HVAC system. Well, that, that, that was the point I'm getting at. Probably before 30 years, we'll upgrade the system again. Perhaps. Because everything just seems to get mm. better and Technology more. Technology changes, equipment will change. So if it has a 30-year life expectancy, mm -hmm. We'll probably tear it out before it reaches the 30 years. But then again, we might keep it for 50 because we do hang on to things. Well, um, the O-ring, you know, it's strange that that was one of the most frequently asked questions. You know, I fully admit that I, I may be overreacting to this. Um, I just wouldn't be able to sleep well if I didn't at least have the discussion with you. See, and I will be around in 30 years, so I don't want people coming and saying, oh, you messed up 30 years ago. Um, but I, I, I tend to... to um, to, to believe that that O-ring um, is going to hold that system. Now, uh, my biggest concern is all, all the joints have to have that little tool crank them down. And I understand if it's not done properly, it doesn't get its little stamp. And it can be redone right then. Um, and that sounds good, but if one of them gets done that isn't quite perfect, 
um, and it might not show up until it's in use and stuff. That's my, my concern. But you would have that same problem with a solder joint or a braze joint. That sometimes it takes a little more pressure or a little more cold or something um, to do that. Yes. But but I think they're going to test it with 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 air, right? Nitrogen. Yeah. First, mm -hmm. to make sure that everything does hold um, before they put the refrigerant in. So um, it will be tested, and if there's a leak present during construction, they'll find it. Now, if there's a leak after it's running, will the computer will it have some sort of a notice that, that the computer can pick up? The only it, it'll only. The only indication that we'll have is we'll either be, be able to see visible refrigerant oil from the pipe, or the system will just start not working. Um, it can work with a variation of pressures. There's, there's, it's, it's not an absolute number, but it'll, it'll run with a variation of pressure. But if that pressure gets too low, things will start not working, and that, that's the big red flag. And then you have to go find it. Then you've got to go find it and fix it and recharge. It's like a water leak. Eventually you'll find it. The floor will get wet. The wall will get wet. Something. Something will happen. There will be some kind of an indication. Yes. Mold. Yeah. It comes through a hole. Yeah. It comes through. So, that's my story. You're sticking with it. Huh? I can't ask you to do anything because I don't have any money to support it. So, thank you for listening. Well, David, what do you think? I'd, um, I'd go along with the risk. Yeah. I, I guess I would agree. I'm, I'm not an expert on this, but I think it'd be hard for us to go ask the delegation for another forty thousand mm dollars. -hmm. I mean, if you could finagle it some way <laughs> that we had the money. I was impressed with their demonstration, actually. I know. I'm sorry I missed it. <clears throat> um, it seemed really sturdy. I mean, very sturdy. Very again, sturdy. I, again, I'm not. I'm not afraid of the installation. I'm not afraid of the quality of work that these contractors are doing. My only concern is the longevity. Roll, roll the dice. Well, I guess the majority of the board thinks we ought to. Take the risk and go for the new stuff. Well, like I said, thank you for listening. The technology kind of increases. Um, while you're here, can you give us a Siemens update? Yeah, uh, they're going to be back uh, tomorrow to do more lighting. Uh, not tomorrow, next Tuesday, excuse me. Um, they, they ran out of some product. That was, well, not ran out, some product wasn't in yet. And uh, it'll be arriving at the end of this week, so it'll be, it'll be back next week. Back Monday at the jail, Tuesday at the nursing home, and um, they'll be in here uh, at some point next week too to finish up. Who, um, boy, did I tell you I came in the office the other night, last week, week before, I guess, and I flipped the light switch on, and it was like, oh, boy, was that bright? It's a little brighter. It's a little, it's a little whiter than you're used to, uh, but it's using a third of the power that it was using. That's the amazing part, is it? It's a third. That's huge. Yeah. It's huge. And uh, it's a third brighter. Uh, I think it's not that much. It, it's 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 probably. Um, they they measure light in um, lumens. lumens or or degrees Celsius. Um, these lights are, I believe, thirty five hundred. We went from three thousand, so it's it's only a difference of five hundred. So it's a little wider, but. Well. Yeah. Anything else they're doing? Yeah. What are we doing with with uh, uh, that's EMC is the lighting. Yep. The boiler work is going to is uh, HVAC work. Excuse me. Is continuing at the jail. Uh, they're going to start in here uh, in a couple of weeks. About about three weeks. They're going to start in this building. Be a lot of activity. And the boilers are coming in. Boilers are here. May? Oh, they are here. Boilers are here.
Those are here. Wow, that is quick. They're in their, they're in their job trailer out back. So they're starting those in May? Because they got the yes. four foundation and stuff. Right? Uh, and the, the outside units, the air conditioning units, those are going to go on pads outside. Uh, those aren't here yet. Oh, that's right. So the replacement for Adley key boilers here? Yes. It's not leaking anymore, though. It's not leaking anymore. <laughs> Oh, that hurts. A couple, of, a couple of weeks, that's all I needed. Yeah. Didn't, didn't make it. Oops. You tried hard, though. Got to give you right. credit for trying, though. That's it for now. Thank you very all much. All right, thank you very right. much. Thank you. And in 30 years, we'll have this discussion again about the Zoom one. Okay. Um, I don't know where, where Jason is yet. Oh, it's only 10.30. Um, yellow folder is only uh, non-public minutes. So do that non-public. Um, so we're up to administrator update. So in your packet is what I sent to the delegation. It's this. Um, uh, there's a request for uh, new county physicians, um, and I provided that all that information to them. Uh, the sick time buyback is in each department, and the future financial considerations for staff is included. So that's what I sent to them. Um, there was talk of nine new people, but there's only eight. I thought the sheriff was getting a new, uh, another dispatch position, but uh, he had gotten that last year, so it's hard to keep up with all the... And how he's rolling three per diems into full-time, right? The LNAs. Yeah, uh, four. Four. Four, yeah. This health insurance is per month? Yes. Yeah. <coughs> Yesterday, yep. Yeah. I sent it to Melissa and Edie, well, actually last night, and uh, um, they would distribute it out from there. Mm -hmm. That looks good. And that's it. All right. Any commissioner updates? David, do you have any? Amount of TAN money? Um, probably. Because I was wondering if we did it after we get taxes in the fall, or I, I don't know when we get taxes in December? December 17th, yeah. So if we could pay it in December? Probably not. Um, okay. everyone's, due, everyone's due it in July. <clears throat> That's what I was thinking, because it, it might cost us less actually. Or if we did it monthly. Um, I don't know. Yes. And, and Chair, if I may, usually your insurances are due um, once a year. <coughs> and if you go into a payment plan, they usually charge higher because they're not getting their capital <coughs> all at once. Um, so they do charge a little extra for that. The idea of trying to pay it uh, in December, you've got a very short window get your taxes on December 17th uh, to pay that before December 31st. Um, you could make a case that the July payment comes out of the TAN funding, but then again, depends on the cash flow at that point, whether it's actually TAN dollars paying it or, or current revenue in the bank that's paying it. Well, but our expenses at that time uh, means that we've <coughs> tapped into TAN money. 
That's why I was you're just... Absolutely, you're absolutely... You're absolutely right. I've been doing my own process. Yeah. I was trying to yeah. figure this out. And, and um, it just depends on the cash flow at the moment. That's what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Because we get revenue in that's been appro appropriated by the delegation to spend, and that's what we do. Um, <coughs> so, you know, it's not all in money you know, that, that we use, it's, it's a mixture of everything. Well, well, I understand that, but uh, we wouldn't be using because we pay back the TAN money in, in December, right. so this would be out of the, the tax. It's just that your insurance company, you, you either end up having a six-month cycle and have to renew your insurance in six months, which my suspicions are, chances are your insurance is going to go up um, during that six-month period versus having it locked in for a year. So again, I mean, there's pros and yeah. cons to both. Yeah. We only have a year policy. Mm -hmm. Year to year. Yeah. I'm just kind of astounded at this um, sick pay buyback amount. Is this for just 18? Yeah. No, no, it's, no, this is for 19. This is for 19? Mm-hmm. I mean, I don't think it's that much. <clears throat> it's a hundred and over a hundred and twenty thousand dollars. Well, a lot of it's contractual, like the sheriffs and right. dispatches. Right. What's, what's yeah. Mm -hmm. I just. Well, it's better to have them work than to have them take their sick time. It's a lot cheaper. Because oh. then we don't have to pay overtime. We don't have to pay. Um, Agency, or I'm just used to you know, making two sick days a year, and if you didn't use them, you <coughs> lost them because it wasn't a mm -hmm. that's, that's old school. <laughs> yeah, uh, we get 12 days, the jail gets 15, the sheriff gets 15. Would you like to add media input to that also? Well, I, I, I thought I thought we had yeah media questions and public input. Second. All those in favor of doing the media and public input now say aye. 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 Those opposed. Okay, so now we'll do media input. As you probably saw from our teletalk, you know everybody cares about dogs and what people are doing with dogs. I was just wondering what prompted the um, dog policy. Is that nursing home stuff? Um, where, where did I get? You want to answer that? You're the chairman. sitting here the other day conducting our meeting and there was a yapping going on across the hall here and um, the 
was also, that was probably two weeks ago, and then it was here another day, and we were told that um, little children get uptight when they come in for the victim witness, and having a dog in there is nice, and um, it makes them relax, and that led to, do we have a policy, because if the dog bit somebody or took a child's cheek off, where would we be if that's how we get there? Okay. It sounds like there's an issue at the nursing home as well. <coughs> if, if how that's the first time control. that came up tonight, today, Damon, at the nursing home. And as you know, in Whitaker Woods, the, the Connolly selectmen are wondering if we need a lease law over there. And uh, the city of Nashville, they're looking at their lease law, and it turns out that the, the loophole there is no one said how long the leash has to be. Huh. 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 So, so, I mean, people care about people care about dogs more than anything. That, that's been my experience. So, so if someone's talking about dogs, I'm on it. Oh, sorry, Amanda. When you're talking about you brought pigs to school, is that something you currently do, or 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 was that during our teaching career? Uh, no. Um, for the past two years, I've I've brought um, a piglet to different schools for kiss a pig contests that they had among the teachers and things, and let the kids pat them and play with them. They were little piglets. And the traveling barn, I had never heard of. A traveling barn. Or and I believe it was traveling barn, yeah, Bruce Scruton out of Rochester, uh, Rochester Farmington. Um, I believe she's retired from traveling barn. Yeah. Okay. Well, but she used to come over here to the nursing home. Um, not last year, but the year before, I was, had the privilege of being over there and helping carry the little baby animals around to the different mm. residents. Well, they were all very excited to see, you know, baby goats and just Well, everybody loves a good clear story, so thank you. Yes, sir. The commission is uh, has a meeting posted for Concord at 4.30 or 4, 4.30. I just wanted to make you aware of the fact that the house session tonight is supposed to go until like maybe 7 or 8 o'clock p.m. So I don't know when this is going to be fit in. So you may want to uh, contact the chair, or I can contact the chair to find out what you're going to do. Because if you go down there, you might be waiting a long time. So I just want to make you aware of that. And if you want me to contact the chair, I can do that right now if you want. You said 4, 4, 4.30. And if the house session goes until 7 o'clock, then we can just leave the house floor. Uh, I don't know. On. So I just want to make you aware of that so you can plan. Well, maybe we'll have to have dinner down there. We haven't got a credit card policy yet. Well, we can use mine and I'll ask for reimbursement. <laughs> Thank you for that uh, update. I don't think it's a bad idea to get an update. I was just going to say, say that. Because I got an email said that it might go to 10 o'clock. <laughs> so I'm like, whoa. Well, I'm Do they break for lunch? They do, usually around noon, and then they'll break for dinner if, if uh, they usually provide pizza. So, I don't know. If they don't lock you in. If they don't, yes. If they, if they have to maintain a quorum, they will lock you in. Um, well, I just want to make you aware of that, because if you're spending money to go down there and you're just sitting there, what's the use of that? Yep. Would you do that then? Well, at noon time. At noon time. I'll, I'll, or now, or now, contact the chair and contact you. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, any other public input? Any other media questions? Are um, we ready? Now, we are going to go into non public, but then we are coming back out of non public into public session. At some point. At some point. And then, of course, we will sign the checks. That was funny last week. Uh, this week it will be uh, Amanda and Terry's. Uh,
charges against him or her unless the employee affected one has the right to a meeting and two right, requests the meeting be open in which case the request shall be granted non-public session number two uh, RSA 91-A colon 3 paragraph Roman 2 parentheses small lowercase c, matters which if discussed in public would likely affect adversely the reputation of any person other than a member of the body or agency itself. And session 3, RSA 91-A colon 3, comma, paragraph Roman 2, parentheses lowercase g, Consideration of security related issues bearing on the immediate safety and security, uh, safety of security personnel or inmates at the county correctional facility by the county correctional superintendent or their designee. Roll call, please. Commissioner Babson? Yes. Commissioner McCarthy? Yes. Commissioner Bebar? Yes. Did I hear a second? So no, you didn't. Oh, I'll second it. Roll call. Yes, Commissioner Garrison? Yes. Commissioner McCarthy? Yes. Commissioner Bivard? Yes. 